In this presentation, we will put together a statement of revenue expenditures and changes in fund balances. We're going to have our trial balance on the left side, and we're going to put that information into the blue area on the right side. The trial balance is in balance in order in that the debits equal the credits. Credits represented with bracketed numbers or negative numbers. Debits with positive numbers, unbracketed numbers. Debits minus the credits equals zero. So we have a full trial balance, although, of course, we're not going to show too much activity in terms of the assets and liabilities because our focus is on the income statement type of accounts or more of the temporary type of accounts equivalent to what would be income statement accounts in a for-profit type of organization. But we want to be able to take something that is in balance and consider it as we convert it from a debit and credit format to a plus and minus format in terms of the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance, which is similar to what we would think of as the income statement, the timing type of accounts. Therefore, we will be concentrating on those accounts down below, those accounts in the dark blue, those accounts that are like temporary accounts, those that typically would close out to what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization or the fund balance type section here. As we do so, what we're going to do is we're going to find a home for all of the temporary accounts, the dark blue accounts, as well as the equity accounts. And as we do so, we'll get to the bottom line number of the 303-300. Now, note that as we do so, there's a bit of a caveat there. We're looking to find a home for all of the income statement account numbers. However, we're going to be not uh, including the budgetary type of accounts as we go through this. So we might want to actually label them out here and say, we're not going to include those. That's going to be an, an added kind of wrinkle. And we want to think about, well, why are they on the trial balance and how can we not include them and still be in balance here get to our net income number what will be the net income number and how would this not throw us out of balance when we consider the double entry accounting system in terms of the, of the balance sheet overall so we might want to go through here and the reason is because they're going to balance each other out so if we go through this and we just mark off those items that are going to be budgetary accounts they're going to be this one up top i'll make it yellow and then we have the estimated accounts here. So estimated revenues and estimated other financing sources. And then we have the appropriations. And then we have the estimated other financing uses. Now these items are not going to be included. So we're not going to be included in uh, the, the income statement calculation. And they wouldn't be included in the calculation of the fund balance. And therefore... They're going to they're gonna net each other out. So if I was to highlight all these debits minus the credits, debits minus the credits here, it adds up to zero. And that's why it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem because, of course, if we were to reverse these exactly, they would be eliminated entirely from the double entry accounting system. We would eliminate the whole kind of journal entry and therefore it won't be a problem. When we consider our balances in terms of the income statement accounts then down below, what's going to be our bottom line number? It's going to be the sum of these items plus the sum of these items. And we'll close that up. That uh, 258 to 10 is going to be the increase in the fund balance or kind of like the net income number of our statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. Okay, that said, let's keep get into it here. And we're going to say the first start is just what we would expect. It's going to be revenue because this is kind of like our income statement type of statement. The revenues is going to be from the taxes. So we have sales tax. So I'm going to say sales tax. That'll be this item up top. And we're going to pull that to the inner column. So I'm going to pull that to the inner column. I'm going to flip the sign by saying negative instead of equals and pick up that sales tax number. I'm going to make these green as we find a home for them to say, okay, we found a home for that one. Then we've got the investment earnings. So we're going to say investment earnings is next. Once again, I'm going to flip the sign with a negative and pick up that number. So there we have it. And I'm going to say, okay, we found a home for that one. I'm going to underline that. And then that's going to give us our total revenues total revenues will bring out to the outer column using the sum function summing those items up and there we have this one and then we're looking for the expenditures so then we have the expenditures we have expenditures down below including the interest and the principal we're not looking at the other financing sources because that's going to go down below in our statement here so we're going to go to the expenditures which is going to be the bond interest I'm going to bring that to the inner column again, and that's going to be this item. So we're going to say we found the bond interest and then the bond principal. 
is going to be an expenditure on the statement uh, of revenues expenditures and changes in fund balance for the debt service fund because it's a modified accrual basis here. And then we're going to give the total and sum this up. So we'll sum it up in the outer column, SUM brackets and summing that up. Then we're going to have the subtotal, the subtotal of excess of revenues under expenditures. So we'll subtract this two out. We're going to say subtracting this two out. Now the revenues are greater than the expenditures. This doesn't necessarily have to be the case because we're going to have those other type of financing sources here in the debt service fund. So now we're going to go back to the other financing sources. And so we'll have another uh, subcategory that's going to be other financing sources and uses. And then we're going to start this off with the interfund transfer in. So this is going to be kind of like an income statement type of account in that it's going to increase the bottom line increase in the fund balance but it's going to be in a different section down here because it's going to be an interfund transfer other financing source so i'm going to say negative instead of equals so we're going to say negative of the 178 200 and we're going to say that we have found a home for that one and then we want the proceeds uh, of refunding bonds so proceeds of refunding bonds we're going to pick up this one. We're going to flip the sign. So I'm going to say negative instead of equals to flip the sign, picking that item up. I'm going to make that green to say that we have found that one. And the next is that we have a payment to the escrow agent. Now, this one is a payment, other financing use, more like an expense as opposed to revenue. Because we're down here, down below in the other financing sources and uses, uses bracketed, uses negative. We want to flip the sign and make this a negative. So the other two are kind of like revenue items. But this is kind of like an expense item, which we're going to represent here with a negative number. So there we have that. And then we're going to subtotal that. So we're going to break that or sum that up and pull that out to the outer column, which will equal the sum of these items, which will be this plus this minus this, the revenue items minus the expense items. That's going to give us the total other financing uses. Then we have the increase in the fund balance. This is basically the net income type of number. We're in the outer column now. This was the revenue over the expenses. And down here we have more revenue. So this is going to be an adding column. We're going to add this up. So this is going to be equal to the sum of these two. Now this might look a little bit funny because we're, we're probably used to seeing something that we would subtract here. Something that we would subtract out on, on an income statement. But of course again here we have the the other financing sources is often going to be greater than the other financing uses because a lot of the money that's going into the debt service fund isn't coming from revenue oftentimes but from some kind of other financing source such as a transfer or proceeds on on the bonds or something like that so then we're going to say that we want to tie this out to basically the balance sheet item which is similar to the equity section or the fund balance you can think of this as kind of tying it out similar to tying out to retained earnings or the capital account we're going to pick up the beginning balance which is going to be negative of scrolling back up this item and remember this is kind of like um, retained earnings there shouldn't be any activity to it and if there's not this number is going to be the amount that it was at the beginning of the time period at the end of the time period after we close out the temporary accounts which will be most of these blue accounts other than the budgetary accounts it will then be adjusted to that plus the the fund balance diff change the net income equivalent number at the end so that's going to be our beginning number if we sum that up then we get our ending number for the fund balance at the end of the time period so and I, we found a home for these two so i'm going to highlight these i didn't highlight those so we found a home we found a home there and then we could say well how can we double check that number that's going to be of course the beginning balance here as a credit and then everything else i'm going to highlight this is one way to do it i'm going to highlight everything else debits minus the credits all the blue area then equals that 303 300 or in other words it's basically the equity section now what would be equivalent to the equity section or assets minus liabilities which would be the uh one 303 300 as you can see in the sum down here now, again, you might be saying, well, how could we do that when we didn't include any of these yellow items in the income statement? How, do, how are we getting to something that's going to be in balance? How are we getting to the proper 303-300, which we know is proper because it is equivalent to assets minus liabilities, 303-300.
and that's because all of the uh, balance, all the budgetary accounts, if we were to add them up, add up to zero. So we're eliminating them entirely. So you can also get to the same 303-300 this way. You could say, if you don't have this nice convenient setup in Excel, debits minus the credits uh, to sum this out, you could say it's going to be equal to the sum of, uh, well, I don't need the sum right now. It's going to be equal to this number, the beginning balance, plus the activity in green that we added, plus the sum of the green numbers, brackets, plus the sum of the green numbers, bracket. And we get the 303-300, which is the same as if we just sum the entire thing up. So if I just sum the whole thing up, and the blue accounts, we get the 303-300. It's the same because we're basically saying that we're not going to include this thing that balances out those being the budgetary accounts.